Hello everyone. So in today's video, as the title suggests, what I'm going to do is uh, sort of slightly amusingly going to uh, share with you my shame. I think I've uh, I've been on YouTube long enough now that I think it's time I came clean and um, perhaps shared with you one of my, I want to say, dirty little secrets. Um, as carpenters, obviously, we have lots of uh, we have lots of power tools, and you know we we find that they help us and no end. But there's always, uh, as usual, there's always uh, hand tools that we have and you can get I mean I used to do it you can get tools and you can really cherish them and you can perhaps mollycoddle them and, 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 and maybe not use them as much as you should favoring maybe a lesser set or a rougher set and I know that that I've come across carpenters in the past who've I'm going to I'm going to talk specifically here about uh, what goes in your tool roll, so basically chisels and uh, drill bits. I've known carpenters in the past who, who've had the most fantastic set of, you know, really expensive uh, joinery grade chisels that they kind of only ever bring out to say, look at my wonderful chisel roll, but never kind of act, actually use them. They never see sort of active service. And certainly when I started as an apprentice, um, I bought a lovely set of, um, in fact, I don't, did I buy, I think they were second hand when I bought them, but they were, these gorgeous maple handled um, bevel edge firmer chisels. Now, um, the sort of bevel edge firmer chisel is, 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 is fine for everything I do, sort of general carpentry. But as the years went on, I found that you'd, you'd have these sort of, sort of, I call Sunday best, you know, uh, tools, uh, hand tools, and you find that you just wouldn't use them. You'd always be waiting for this kind of perfect job where you think yeah I'm going to use my top of the range or my expensive chisels or my expensive drill bits on them and invariably again in the kind of carpentry work I do that those jobs are just kind of far and few between and if you're working in a workshop environment obviously it's, it, it's very different because you know you can you can look after your tools a lot better and you know you're always making sure you use a mallet and whereas when you're out on site you've got your, your s-wing hanging down by your side and you get your chisel and you just want to use it um, so of course, over the years of this, the, these lovely sort of tool roll full of lovely chisels and drill bits, as the years go on, you know, you you either over grind them or you break one or you lose one or they go rusty or, you know, you drop it or you hit a nail. And eventually, as the years have gone on, I've become much less precious about my, um, about my chisels and my drill bits. So what I'm going to do, uh, just a little video to show you, you know, I feel that... Um, uh, with uh, you guys that are watching now, I feel that I'm in a safe space that I can share this all with you uh, without fear of too much judgment. So I'll get the tool rolled out and let's have a quick look at it. Right, here it is. Now, straight away, you'll notice that, um, again, I, it's not even an expensive tool roll. And I think when I bought this one, I um, it was perhaps a, it was a buy one, get one free. So I don't know where I got them from, but look, here they are, look. So perhaps this is the first part of my my undoing or my shame is that what's that faithful it's not even an expensive brand but perhaps I bought two because I knew they wouldn't last that long but um, so yeah not particularly expensive tool roll I worked with a guy I may have mentioned who he had this wonderful tool roll uh, full of all these wonderful chisels and, and drill bits so I think he, t he paid um, like a cobbler or a leather man he paid him 180 pounds just to make his tool roll and it was the most wonderful bit of leather work I've ever seen but you know each their own I wouldn't really want to take that onto a job where there's 50 other people and uh, you know hope that it's still there when I get back. So uh, let's have a look. We just literally all that's got a little um, buckle on it. Just undo that and here it is. Showing this to the world for the first time. Here's you know potentially my my shame. So uh, chisels and auger bits. Now I've had a few comments on some of my other videos where people sort of see me using auger bits and say oh auger, auger bits are too aggressive, but. I really like them, and as long as you understand how an auger bit works, um, it's obviously got this screw on the end that draws it in, but also what it can do is it can end up splitting the grain. So whenever I'm using an auger bit, especially in a door or something like that, or something thinner, I always pre-drill it. Um, you pre-drill it enough so that the, the screw won't split the wood, but so the screw still pulls it in. Uh, you'll notice these are, these are quite an old, um, these are like an old marples chisels, and some of these are very old. Um, the reason I like these is they were a bit more expensive, but the you've got two, the, sort of three main parts. Obviously, you've got the screw, and then you've got the lip, and then you've got the spur. 
and obviously the spur goes round, uh, scores the grain and then the lip pulls it out. Um, what I like about these, and whenever I pick drill bits, I don't know if I can see that on the camera, you can see that the spur sticks up quite a bit more than the lip and some of the, the sort of cheaper auger bits, it doesn't stick up that much. And basically what it means when, when the spur sticks up more than the lip, it means you can sharpen the spur more and therefore you can get more life out of your um, drill. You can only, I mean, you do reduce the height of the lip a little bit, but not that much before you basically lose the geometry of the drill. So, you know, I really like these. And, and as you can see here, um, I don't think how old some of these are, but I can keep sharpening them. And, you know, as long as that spur um, is, uh, hits the wood before the lip does, it'll, it'll create lovely clean holes. So what we've got here, look, I've got quite a few there, look. So um, I really like these drill bits. And actually what I did, and I'll quickly show you, and maybe I'm contradicting myself because I have got a few drill bits actually that I only bring out when I absolutely have to. Many, many years ago when I think, I don't think, I'm sure you can't buy this anymore. I found a supplier and what I actually did is, uh, oh, there's no one on the floor. It didn't land point side down, but that's exactly my point there. You know, that's why I don't spend too much money on a lot of my stuff because you can drop it and take the edge off it. Um, sorry, back to these chisels, uh, back to these drill bits, I should say. Uh, yeah, I found this online supplier and basically had a massive stock. So look, I've still got a few absolutely look brand new in the packet. This, funnily enough, this makes me feel like um, uh, one of those sort of geeks who collects um, vintage toys and uh, doesn't take them out of the box. That's, maybe they'll be worth something in one day and uh, be absolutely pointless me having them. But uh, it is nice to have these and know that if I did some really special exotic job far off in the future, I could uh, crack out one of these brand new uh, drill bits. So uh, that's those. Uh, so other, other drill bits I've got, again, uh, I spent a little bit more money on those, as I said, because I can keep those sharp, but I have got a selection of drill bits that are pretty much just, they are cheap. These ones will come from, um, you know, the likes of Tool Station or Screw Fix here in the UK. Um, 10 mil is, is, is one that I really do use a lot. And again, I'd love to maybe show you there. If you can see the difference here, the lip and the spur, I, I don't know if you can see that, sorry if you can't, but the spur is only just sticking down past the lip. So once this goes blunt, I won't bother sharpening that. And that's probably why I've got, what, three of them in there. So these are, they're not expensive now. So use these, maybe get a couple of months out of them. And then if they get blunt or get ruined, you just can get another one. So again, I've got a 15 mil one there. And you can, I think you can see there that the, if I sharpen that once, but the, the spur I think is perhaps even lower than the lip now. So that, that one creates a pretty rough hole. I need to replace that. So, so yeah. Um, there, there's a sort of so really I've got kind of two types of drill bits there. I've got ones that I spend more money on um, and when these all run out I don't, I don't know which ones I'll buy and then I've got ones that I sort of get through a bit quicker uh, you know like 15 mil and 10 mil and um, I just replace those as and when. I've also got what we've got here um, there's an odd size on here this one three eighths of an inch that one. I had that a long time because I did a lot of uh, specialist fair stair installations for a company and they still insist on using 3.8 dowel uh, when for all their draw draw doweling so I've got that one uh, for that um, oh and there's the odd one just that's one of those Bosch multi-purpose 10 mils that's really handy I don't use it that often but you know, if you just do want to want to do one hole maybe you're doing a fissure fixing or something and you just want to put one hole in that will go straight in the old combi drill uh, or even on hammer I know it's not ideal but just for the old one hole that's really great uh, so, so that's all those uh, drill bits there. Let's get those out of the way. And uh, here's my chisel. So perhaps this is the real shame. So as I said earlier, I had um, I had a really nice set of maple handled chisels, but they were just they were just getting battered on site. And obviously, if you don't use them with a mallet, you end up splitting the handles. And then I lost one and dropped one. And um, I think I dropped one down a cavity. I was working on a roof on a four-story building, and I dropped. I think it was my inch and an eighth one, so that one I dropped it down a cavity. So, um, and then I think I broke one. So I went and bought a set of these. They're just relatively cheap, sort of Stanley bevel edge firmer chisels. But you know, I found these to be really, really good. And as as you can see from sort of my videos, I, I'm doing lots of different types of carpentry, more sort of general carpentry. And I I find these absolutely fine. So an inch and an eighth there. Um, you can hit these with a hammer. They're hammer safe. Um, half inch there and um, these are my main sort of two chisels I use and and there's a 
is a quarter quarter inch there, which I don't use that often, but this one of those little sort of picky ones, I don't know, can't remember last time I used it. Uh, and then I did have a, um, a, a nine to three quarter inch one of these, but that broke. So I just uh, went down to the builder's merchants and replaced it with this one. So again, it's, it's uh, not the same as these other ones, but it's a perfectly decent chisel. Um, I use this quite a bit when I'm doing doors and general sort of second fixing, but this one's got the um, shaft goes all the way through it. So you can you know, give that a good welt with the hammer. And, and then the, the last one I've got is, a, this is a three quarter chisel. I think I said, yeah, this one was 15 mil. This is a three quarter inch chisel. And this, I don't know if any of you guys have got a chisel like this, but this is my absolute beastie sort of wrecking chisel look can hammer it all the way through. So use that for like, I don't know, if you can't get something off or you've got a wedge that's against a steel beam or bricks or you're chipping off some block work or, and then um, I sharpen all these, I'll maybe do another video on that, but I, I tend to sharpen these with my um, belt sander so you can see I get a nice, I've got quite a slight grinding angle on there. Um, and then my sharpening angle is just a little bit steeper and it, it means I get a nice clean cup. It doesn't hold its edge quite as well, but um, I'll do a, a separate video on that. Again, if I wanted to sharpen this one up, I'll just get my belt sander up and put sort of a, fa a fairly rough ground edge on it and that'll be, um, that'll be good enough. So uh, in terms of drilling and chiseling, that's about it. But I will show you uh, just while we're being honest and uh, full disclosure, I'll show you a, another kit that I've got and I said, I know, um, people had mentioned that I use auger bits and a lot of people use flat bits. Well, again, I think I've got this free uh, bar. It's not particularly tr trade rate, uh, rated, I don't, I don't know. But I keep this little set and I do find it useful. It's nice to have a set that's got every size in it and I'm the kind of person tend to, if I have a set of something and, and a bit goes missing, to me it kind of renders the set useless. Uh, but I do have these, I don't use them very often, but it is nice to have you know, there might be a size I haven't got like a 38 mil if I was putting a cylinder night latch in, you know, a, a door, security door. Um, I know I've got one. Um, not, a, not a particular fan of these. I know that's just my personal opinion and my personal preference, I should say. Um, be interested to know what you guys think. And there's some absolutely fantastic um, spade bits, you know, self uh, feeding ones and stuff. But I tend to find on, depending on what material you're using, as you start drilling in, these can wander a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you guys uh, say about these. And I think also I've got, just talk amongst yourselves, I've got a few of these. These are my super rough um, drill bits. I, I can't, I remember I bought a set maybe of these and then, but if I've got anything really roughly where I might hit a nail or something, or I just butcher my way through with these, you can see that one's had the part of it snapped off. And this one I cut down really short so that I could get in somewhere tight. Uh, same with this one, but I do tend to find that these these are particularly aggressive. Um, I wouldn't use them for any sort of fine work, but for just boshing a hole through. You know, if, if you wanted to put some wires through or something, I do I have these sort of tucked to any little corner of the van, and I find them really useful. So, so there you go. You can see that sort of. I say it's my shame. It's uh, everybody's different, and I find that that little set. Uh, this set of chisels and these uh, sort of uh, collection of drill bits uh, serve me really, really well. So as always, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys uh, think of, of my tool roll and, you know, go easy on me if you think that I'm somehow letting the carpentry side down by having such a shambolic tool roll. Uh, one other thing, just, just for a bit of fun, is you'll see these, uh, these are sort of these marples Irwin record whatever they I can't remember who they ended up being but um, you can see that they've got this wasted sec section on the shank here so um, I'm sure a lot of you old timers will know exactly what that is but for anyone who doesn't um, have a guess to see what you can think that uh, see if you can think what that shank is for it's got a definite purpose and uh, it's from time gone by so uh, yeah comments uh, down below if you can tell me what that is so there you go. Uh, I kind of feel that I have shared something uh, with the group. I hope it's a safe space and I don't get judged too harshly. Um, I told you about my uh, my sort of chisels and my uh, my drill bits that go in my tool roll. Um, I'm sure uh, again, 
to the carpenters out there and maybe you know you guys if you're DIYers or you've got a collection of chisels and, and drill bits maybe you keep them in uh, you, perhaps you do perhaps your tool roll is more similar to mine than a, than a pro uh, tool roll but you know these are these are the kind of things that you know they really do help me earn my living I don't need any any more than this but as always I'd be really interested to hear um, from you guys in the comments you know whether you've got a set of chisels and a tool roll that you absolutely cherish and only comes out for special occasions or like me whether you just you know have your tools and you make them work to to earn you the money so as always uh thanks for watching and i hope you found this video interesting